In this video we're discussing the pulmonary circulation. Pulmonary means to do with the lungs. Now it's a bit complicated but if you if you stick with it we'll, we'll, we'll get it fairly quickly. Now what we have here already sketched out is the heart. So we have the left atrium, the left ventricle, bicuspid valve. This is the aorta here, right ventricle, right atrium. This is the inferior and superior vena cava draining into the right atrium. And leaving the right atrium here, we have the pulmonary artery. And this is the main pulmonary arterial trunk that leaves the heart. But pretty soon this main arterial trunk leaving the heart is going to divide into two one branch going to each lung. So right ventricle, main pulmonary trunk, and of course this here is the right lung, and this is the left. So taking the blood to the lung, so this is the left main pulmonary artery. Now just to clarify this we're going to colour it in and as, as per the convention because it's partly deoxygenated blood leaving the right ventricle we're going to colour it in in, uh, in blue. So the pulmonary circulation begins here with the pulmonary arterial valve. So the blood's going up here, up the main trunk and then it's going to both sides of the lungs, one lung on either side by the right and left pulmonary artery. Now once the artery gets into the lung it's going to break down fairly quickly into smaller blood vessels. Now I'm going to do these anatomically correctly uh, later on in this video but for now let's just think about it diagrammatically. So the pulmonary artery is going to go into the lung here. There we go. And it's going to break down into lots of smaller vessels, progressively smaller arterial vessels. And this is eventually going to break down into the networks of pulmonary capillaries. There's going to be huge networks of pulmonary capillaries surrounding the alveoli. And these are going to drain into pulmonary venules and then into pulmonary veins until eventually two large pulmonary veins are going to leave the lung. And again we can colour this into it to keep things clear. So here's the pulmonary arterial branch breaking down into many smaller pulmonary vessels, small, smaller arterial vessels, until eventually the blood gets into the pulmonary capillaries where the gaseous exchange takes place. And that means as the blood goes through it's going to be oxygenated. So as it goes through the pulmonary capillaries it's going to leave in the pulmonary veins, the venules draining into progressively larger veins and it's leaving as highly oxygenated blood like this. So two pulmonary veins leaving each lung. And these pulmonary veins are going to drain back to the heart and it's going to be the same on this side so um, we're going to have the pulmonary artery breaking down into smaller branches, breaking down into the untold millions of pulmonary capillaries where the gaseous exchange is taking place. So again the left pulmonary artery breaking down into progressively smaller arterial vessels and as the blood goes through the pulmonary capillaries taking up the oxygen from the alveoli becoming bright red oxygenated blood by the time it's draining into the pulmonary venules. And then these are going to drain back to the heart.
So again, there's going to be two pulmonary veins leaving the left lung. And we notice that there's four pulmonary veins go into the left atrium. So these are going to go into the, carry the blood back to the left atrium. Like this. Carrying the, deox the oxygenated blood back in these pulmonary veins here. Two pulmonary veins draining each lung, collecting the blood from the untold millions of capillaries, pulmonary capillaries. And it's the same on this side, again we're being diagrammatic of course, but this is draining back here and here. goes underneath this pulmonary artery in the diagram, draining back. And we see that there's the holes there in the uh, left atrium for this, uh, these vessels to connect to. So two pulmonary veins draining each lung. Bringing back the blood high in oxygen exactly where it wants to be into the left atrium going back there so all four pulmonary veins draining into the left atrium from there of course the blood goes through to the left ventricle where it's oxygenated through the bicuspid or the mitral valve in uh, pink there we have the aortic valve because this is the aorta just here which of course will take the oxygenated blood to all the, uh, the systemic circulation. So there we have the essence of the pulmonary circulation. So the pulmonary circulation begins with the pulmonary arterial valve here and it ends in the orifices of the four pulmonary veins that drain into the left atrium. Now I've drawn this um, blood supply here very simply, uh, simplistically really, but in actual fact the arteries in blue taking the blood in follow an exquisite fractal pattern that takes the blood to all parts of the lung in a very equal way. And likewise the pulmonary venous system in red follows a similar fractal pattern to drain the blood out. And indeed the bronchial tree going in has a fractal pattern as well. So there's a triple overlying fractal pattern in the lung, quite amazing. I just wanna show you what I mean by fractal because uh, broccoli actually, actually illustrates it really well. So what we have in a fractal pattern is this sort of repeating, duplicating pattern. So we can see we have, a, we have a main trunk going up here and we see this breaks down into smaller ones but then this repeats as it breaks down again and this repeats and breaks down repeatedly into until we get all these tiny bits at the end all those tiny little bits in this case these would be pulmonary vessels but the result is the blood is taken evenly to all parts of the broccoli or of course, in this analogy to all parts of the lung. But we can see the way that the whole area of the broccoli plant is served by this fractal pattern. And in the same way, all of the lung is served by this fractal, triple overlying fractal pattern. So that's the essence of the pulmonary circulation. In the next video we'll put on a little more detail and we'll look at a, a more, more anatomically correct description for the, uh, the nature of this fractal pattern.